What's better, salicylic acid or glycolic acid? If you are standing there in the aisles of the skincare section trying to figure out colic acid serum or a salicylic acid serum, you're gonna wanna watch this video. We're gonna talk about how these ingredients differ, what they do for your skin, what conditions they may improve, and really how to choose which type of ingredient is best for what it is you are seeking to tackle in your skincare routine. Glycolic acid, it's an alpha hydroxy acid. It's actually pretty small. It's water soluble. Salicylic acid, on the other hand, has a large ring structure. In contrast to glycolic acid, salicylic acid is not water soluble, but rather lipid loving. Both glycolic acid and salicylic acid, they work to basically dissolve the glue between sticky skin cells. Depending on the formulation and the concentration, glycolic acid can make its way throughout the epidermis, that's the top layer of the skin. Salicylic acid, on the other hand, it loves the lipids, it loves the oiliness, it has a predilection for going into the pore to exfoliate it. Salicylic acid can also exfoliate the epidermis, although in contrast to glycolic acid, it tends to do so a bit more superficially. Both glycolic acid and salicylic acid, when used consistently, help to compact and smooth out the stratum corneum. That is the top most differentiated layer of your epidermis. So the end result of using these ingredients is smoother skin and an improvement in skin tone. Something about glycolic acid that is unique in comparison to salicylic acid is that it actually can help with water content in the epidermis, improving hydration. Whereas salicylic acid is not so water loving, it's more oil loving. And for that reason, salicylic acid tends to be a little bit more all-inclusive, if you will, in terms of its blackhead and whitehead busting properties. Both salicylic acid and glycolic acid through their exfoliating properties can help to lighten sunspots. They can also improve dry skin conditions like keratosis pilaris or dry rough callus on the bottoms of your feet. Both salicylic acid and glycolic acid are actually used in dermatology clinic at higher percentages than what you could buy in the store for chemical peels. And chemical peels offer a lot of advantages for improving various skin conditions and skin concerns. As a side note, I I have a recent video all about why chemical peels are underrated. I go over the different types of chemical peels, including those that utilize glycolic acid and salicylic acid, so definitely check those out. But product-wise, things that you might be buying in the store, they are going to be a lot weaker, which doesn't mean they don't work. It just means that they don't need doctor supervision to be used safely. But when you go into the store, here's where they differ. Salicylic acid is actually an FDA approved over-the-counter medication for the treatment of acne, for the treatment of warts, whereas glycolic acid is a cosmetic ingredient. That's not to say that glycolic acid in your skincare products is useless and that you can only get the benefits of glycolic acid from a doctor's office getting chemical peels? Absolutely not. As you'll hear as we go along, glycolic acid in skincare products can be pretty effective. Because glycolic acid can permeate through the epidermis, depending on the strength and the formulation, it actually offers the potential to improve collagen in the deeper layers of the skin. This has been shown using over-the-counter cosmetic strengths, whereas salicylic acid is not going to yield that outcome of improving wrinkles with long-term consistent use. These ingredients can complement some other ingredients that you may be using, like retinol. Retinol is often pursued for its anti-aging benefit. Glycolic acid can complement that by improving skin texture and improving collagen with long-term consistent use. And salicylic acid can complement the anti-acne properties of retinoids like adapalene or tretinoin. Salicylic acid not only complements retinoids in terms of its blackhead and whitehead fighting properties, but it's anti-inflammatory and it also is helpful for hyperpigmentation. Both salicylic acid and glycolic acid can be used alone or in combination to tackle rough and bumpy skin, skin texture, and thick callus. Because they exfoliate, they both are useful ingredients in preventing and reducing the formation of ingrown hairs. What about for keratosis pilaris? Now they're both great at dissolving that dry, bumpy stuff. Glycolic acid also helps improve the moisture content of the skin with consistent use. So for that reason, I find that glycolic acid for keratosis keratosis pilaris often performs better. However, salicylic acid gets into the hair follicle a little bit better, so you may find that it's more effective for dissolving those rough bumps and preventing them from recurring. In contrast to glycolic acid, salicylic acid is helpful for some other conditions, warts. Salicylic acid is also useful for seborrheic dermatitis because of its anti-inflammatory properties, the fact that it likes the oily surfaces of the skin, and the fact that
that it exfoliates. Seborrheic dermatitis can happen anywhere on the body. It's commonly referred to as dandruff when it happens in the scalp. Salicylic acid is often found in anti-dandruff shampoos. When it's on the face or the body, it presents as these patches of flaky skin, sometimes in a background of redness. For people who have a deeper skin tone, when they develop seborrheic dermatitis, it actually can heal with hypopigmentation. Salicylic acid is a great option here for controlling this condition. Kind of a way to understand the differences between the two is that glycolic acid really has the potential for epidermal remodeling. It's water loving, whereas salicylic acid really has the potential for improving turnover within the pore and superficially exfoliating the epidermis. Both are going to lead to a compact, thinner, smoother stratum corneum. Just the way they work and their properties differ in such a way that outcomes can be different between the two ingredients. But there's a lot of overlap in terms of the conditions that they help. Let's talk about side effects. With both glycolic and salicylic acid, you can get irritation. And if you have a deeper skin tone, that irritation could potentially lead to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. It's less of a risk with salicylic acid, but it's, it can happen with either ingredient. A word of caution if you are using these ingredients. Remember, they are going to thin out and smooth and compact the stratum corneum. For this reason, beware of getting waxing, sugaring, threading. That can lead to the formation of little sores, little ulcers. It's not uncommon for people who are using these ingredients, say on the face, maybe they go for an eyebrow wax and they get little scabs around the eyebrows. If you are going to wax your face, your eyebrows, or a body site where you're using these ingredients, you wanna stop about a week before. Glycolic acid actually can make your skin more vulnerable to a sunburn. Any glycolic acid product that you purchase, it should come with a warning to make sure to wear sunscreen. Salicylic acid, on the other hand, does not do that. If you remember back to the beginning of the video when I showed you what salicylic acid looks like in terms of its chemistry, it has a large ring structure that actually can absorb UV, and so it's actually a sunscreen ingredient. Um, no, using salicylic acid is not a substitute for sunscreen screen, but all that to say, it actually has some sun protective properties to it, whereas glycolic acid can leave you more sensitive to the sun and make you at greater risk for sunburn. You can actually get salicylic acid poisoning using salicylic acid, but here's the catch. It's unlikely that you're going to have that happen in the amounts that are available over the counter. What does salicylic acid poisoning look like? First presents with ringing in the ears. You can develop nausea, vomiting, hyperventilation. It can be actually life-threatening. I'm not saying that to scare you away from using salicylic acid. It's pretty much unheard of in using it as directed and over-the-counter products to, again, a limited area. But it has been known to occur in someone who used 3% salicylic acid from the neck down three times a day. After just five days, they developed salicylate poisoning. Salicylism is definitely something that we have to take seriously and really consider in uh, dermatology patients who have a condition known as erythroderma, which is basically the skin is red and inflamed all over and losing water. They have a impaired skin barrier, so they have enhanced penetration of that salicylic acid and they are an at-risk group. But for the everyday person using like salicylic acid acne products from the drugstore, this is not likely. Now that you know how these work, how they differ, which one should you actually choose? And both glycolic acid and salicylic acid, they have tremendous overlap in terms of skin benefits and alleviating some of the same skin conditions. When it comes to acne, I always guide people towards salicylic acid. Why? Well, it localizes where acne is going on within the pore, and it's an over-the-counter approved medication for acne, so it makes the most sense. If your skin is prone to healing with hyperpigmentation, you may want to select salicylic acid. That's not to say that glycolic acid is not going to be helpful to you. Salicylic acid, it does have that added benefit of being anti-inflammatory. It does not leave your skin sensitive to the sun like glycolic acid does. So in my opinion, that makes it a really great choice for people who are looking to improve things like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. But maybe you have sunspots, aka solar lenticos or age spots. Glycolic acid may actually actually be more beneficial for those in comparison to salicylic acid because it has the potential to go 
throughout the epidermis a little bit deeper to really get to a place where potentially it can suppress melanin pigment production in those sunspots and really help with lightening them. Salicylic acid though can also be helpful for sunspots. So again, it's not a right or wrong answer. If you are pregnant, you may want to lean into glycolic acid over salicylic acid. Salicylic acid, likely safe in pregnancy, using it as intended in over-the-counter products, but glycolic acid 100% is safe in pregnancy. It's so safe you can actually eat it. Um, I don't recommend doing that. If you have warts, salicylic acid. If you have seborrheic dermatitis, whether it be on your scalp, your face, your body, salicylic acid. What about for the scalp? In my opinion, salicylic acid. It's formulated in shampoos. The scalp has the highest density of, of hair follicles, of pores, so salicylic acid can get in there and really help with product buildup, dandruff. For ingrown hairs, either ingredient can be helpful, but in my opinion, salicylic acid makes, makes a bit more sense because it's going to get into the follicle a little bit better than glycolic acid. What about for wrinkles? Glycolic acid. It can complement retinoid and it's a logical anti-aging ingredient and it can help with age-related slowing down of epidermal turnover that leads to rough texture. Not to say salicylic acid can't likewise be helpful, I just think that glycolic acid makes a bit more sense mechanistically. But truthfully, you don't actually have to make a decision. You could use a product that is formulated with both ingredients and there are a lot of really fantastic products out there that do such a thing. Over the years, we've seen a lot of advancement in alpha hydroxy acid salicylic acid products compared to where we were even six, seven years ago. Now, CeraVe has a product for acne that combines salicylic acid and glycolic acid that I've recommended on here a fair amount. It's really good. It's moisturizing, it's hydrating, it's effective. And I also really like the Neutrogena Stubborn Blackheads Daily Serum with salicylic acid and glycolic acid. I think that these are both effectively formulated products for uh, targeting acne. Even though they're not marketed to you, you may find that these products are beneficial for you if you have keratosis pilaris, rough texture, hyperpigmentation, age spots, or if you form amelia, which are those little cysts. Both of these ingredients, glycolic and salicylic acid, can help reduce the formation of those and in some cases help them go away faster. And then some final pointers about these. First thing you need to know is that when it comes to glycolic acid, no two products are alike. So a word of warning, if you are using a glycolic acid product, say for example, 7% glycolic acid, and you switch over to another new product from a different brand, different product at seven, that's labeled 7% glycolic acid, they can perform very differently. The performance of glycolic acid in terms of exfoliating is influenced by the pH of the product, which plays into what's called the free acid value. For example, the Ordinary's glycolic acid toner, it's a 7% glycolic acid, but its pH is 3.6 um, and close to the pKa, or basically that tells me that this is something that is gonna be formulated in such a way to actually be exfoliating. Whereas other products may be less likely to have a free acid value that really gets the same level of exfoliation. Not to say that those products aren't effective, it may be better better at hydrating the skin up front and over time more slowly leading to results in terms of exfoliating. The other thing that influences glycolic acid performance in terms of formulation overall is inactive ingredients can either slow or enhance the penetration of glycolic acid into the skin. So you can get varying outcomes. So all that to say, no two products are going to perform the same. Therefore, if you're using a glycolic acid product and you wanna try a different one, I suggest being cautious, introduce using it slowly um, because they may not perform the same. You do need to protect your skin from the sun when using either glycolic acid or salicylic acid. While salicylic acid does not change your MED, it doesn't actually make you more sensitive to a sunburn. Because it's smoothing out the top layer, uh, layers of the skin, it does allow for more focused penetration of sun into the skin. So you do need to be protecting your skin from the sun, but you should be doing that anyway. If you're new to either of these ingredients, then I suggest introducing them 
into your routine slowly. Maybe just start using it a few times a week for the first week or so, and then increase to using it daily as tolerated, and maybe even up to twice a day. Again, follow the instructions on the product because products are going to differ in terms of the frequency of use and what your skin tolerates. So start slow and work up to the recommended frequency. I caution against using glycolic or salicylic acid to delicate areas, like around the eyes where the skin is very thin, the lips, there's not much in the way of stratum corneum there. So if you use glycolic acid or salicylic acid, it really can do a number on your lips uh, and leave them very sore because there's not much for it, those ingredients to exfoliate. You don't wanna use these ingredients in the skin folds, like under the arms, groin area, because the combination of skin on skin contact plus sweat really can enhance the penetration and it can become very irritating. For example, I know it's popular right now. People are going after the Ordinary's glycolic acid toner to use as an underarm deodorant slash in improving underarm discoloration. I don't recommend that. That's not how that product is intended to be used. It's pH, which they conveniently disclosed for you, suggests to me that it is likely more on a, the robust end of exfoliating, which could cause a lot of irritation under the arm. It's not intended to be used there for a reason. Uh, it, it can be too irritating. If you wanna use both glycolic acid and salicylic acid, you certainly can, but I suggest choosing a product that is formulated with both ingredients in one product rather than using different products, especially different products from different brands, just to reduce the risk of clashing in terms of the formula that could either make the product more irritating or ineffective. We didn't even scratch the surface in terms of the different types of products that you can choose with these ingredients. Uh, I pointed out leave-on products. They're also products that are using what's called the short contact therapy approach, those are a great way to introduce these ingredients. Namely, they'll be in a mask form where you leave the product on for a you know, defined period of time and then rinse it off. That allows you to derive benefit from the ingredient while reducing the risk of irritation. And you also have these ingredients in wash forms where you just have a lather on the skin, let it sit there for a few minutes and then rinse it off. Recently, as a side note, I did a video all about how to use salicylic acid face wash. This is a really great option. I'm going to link that video for you guys on the end slate. Definitely check it out if you are considering introducing salicylic acid into your routine. I do think starting with a face wash is a logical approach. So check that one out next if you missed it. But if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.